In this video, I'll describe and demonstrate an interesting little kit I purchased and built recently, the CPUville Z80 single board computer. Designed and sold by Don Stewart, this is a little single board computer featuring a Z80 processor. While I've used and even designed similar boards, the interesting feature of this one is that it can run the CPM operating system. The board features a Z80 microprocessor running at 1.8432 MHz. It has 64K of RAM and 2K of monitor ROM, which is normally disabled when running CPM so that all 64K of RAM can be used. It has a full 9-pin serial port, which is used for controlling the computer from a terminal or a computer running a terminal emulator program. It is a parallel IDE interface to a disk drive, a reset switch, power and disk activity LEDs, some option jumpers, and an expansion header. It needs to be powered from an external regulated 5 volt power supply. It's sold as a kit of all parts except the power supply and the IDE disk drive. The board can run the CPM operating system. First released in 1974, CPM provided a command line based operating system that ran on Intel 8080 and compatible processors. Written to be portable, it was relatively easy to port to new hardware using a well-defined BIOS interface. Hundreds of software vendors offered CPM computers in the late 1970s and early 1980s, mostly for business applications like word processing, spreadsheets, databases, and accounting. Thousands of CPM applications were offered as commercial, shareware, and free software. The operating system supported multiple floppy disk drives and a simple command line interface similar to MS-DOS, which it predated. Typically, a CPM computer would connect to a serial terminal. A variant called MPM supported multiple users. Today you can download many of the classic CPM applications for free and even get access to the source code of CPM itself for non-commercial use. The CPUville board is sold as a kit of components. A well-written manual of over 120 pages covers assembly, installing and running CPM, schematic and theory of operation and source code. It uses all through-hole parts and the ROM and GAL chips are pre-programmed. You should find it straightforward to assemble if you have some experience soldering and identifying components and follow the instructions in the manual. All ICs are socketed with the components clearly marked on the board silkscreen. I took my time and had no problem assembling it over the course of an hour or two. Once assembled, it needs a source of 5 volt power, which can be a dedicated power supply or USB with a suitable cable. You can't use an unregulated wall wart type supply. You'll also need 12 volts if you use a real IDE disk drive. A PC power supply is one option to provide both 5 and 12 volts. The serial port connects to either terminal or a computer using a 9-pin straight-through cable. You may need a USB to serial adapter if your computer doesn't have a serial port built in. For the disk drive, you can use a real parallel ATA IDE disk drive, but not a newer SATA or serial ATA drive. You can typically get such a drive from an old discarded computer. Alternatively, there are IDE flash drives and SD card to IDE adapters which are smaller and can be used. The manual lists a number of models which are known to work. In my case, I first used an IDE hard drive which I had around which was housed in a case with a small power supply and USB adapter. I disconnected the USB interface and connected the drive directly to the board with a ribbon cable. The power supply provided power for the drive as well as 5 volts for the computer by a jumper wire. One issue I encountered was that I found I needed to remove the CS Master Slave jumper on the drive in order for it to work. Later, I received this SD to IDE converter board, which I ordered from AliExpress. It emulates an IDE drive but uses an SD flash module. This works well and is smaller, faster, and only requires 5 volt power, which can be taken from the board. I attached it to one of the standoffs on the board. Once assembled and connected to a computer, it should come up on reset in the ROM monitor. The monitor is simple, it fits in 2K of ROM and provides some basic commands. The process of initially bootstrapping CPM is a little involved 
but it's covered well in the manual. Most files needed are provided as downloads, both binaries as well as source code. You do need to download the CPM source code separately, make a few changes, and assemble it. The ROM monitor can read and write to disk, but several steps are needed to perform the one-time process of actually getting a running CPM system on disk. Briefly, the steps to get CPM up and running are format the disk using the provided format program, load CPM and the BIOS from the computer into memory using the ROM monitor, and run a program to write them to the disk drive, and install the CPM bootloader into sector zero of the disk. After the above is done, you can boot CPM from disk using the ROM monitor CPM command. CPM has only a small number of built-in commands, about six, such as DIR to show a directory listing, ERA to erase or delete files, REN to rename a file, and TYPE to display a file. The disk storage appears as four drives, A through D, of two megabytes each. That sounds small, but it's actually quite generous for a CPM system where most programs are only a few kilobytes in size. Additional CPM commands, known as transient programs, are stored on disk. You can download these from one of several CPM sites listed in the manual. In order to transfer these from a computer to CPM, a special version of the ROM monitor is provided, which runs from RAM under CPM, so you can use the monitor bload command to transfer a file and then save it to disk using the CPM save command. This is a little awkward, and a better solution is provided in the form of CPM PCGET and PCPUT programs, which can do file transfers over the serial port using the standard XMODEM protocol. XMODEM handles error detection and retry and is supported by most terminal emulators. Here's an example of transferring a file, in this case, a small program I wrote that clears the screen. Rerun PCGET with the desired file name. Then use the terminal emulator program, in this case I'm using Minicom on Linux, to send the file using the XMODEM protocol. Here's an example of using the transient ASM command, an Intel 8080 assembler. We can assemble a small assembly language hello world program and then run it. On drive A of my system, I have the standard CPM transient programs, as well as a few other useful utilities. On drive B, I've installed two different basic language interpreters and some basic games. The first is Microsoft Basic AD 5.21, which is a very standard and full-featured version of Microsoft Basic. Here's a session running a Guess the Animal game from the book 101 Basic Computer Games.
Another option for BASIC is BBC BASIC for the Z80 version 3.0. Here's a session running a similar Guess the Animal game written for that variant of BASIC. It's a little tedious to transfer files one at a time. I found a CPM program that can extract zip archives. So I can zip up a number of programs on a Windows or Linux computer, transfer the one zip file to CPM, then extract the files using the unzip program. Earlier I demonstrated an assembler program as well as BASIC. Another language option is C. During the heyday of CPM, the BDS-C compiler was very popular. About 75,000 copies were sold. I located a copy and installed it on drive C. Here's a session compiling and running a small program I wrote to generate prime numbers. I've ported some other C programs I wrote, including this text adventure. The main limitation of BDSC is that it predates the ANSI standard, so you need to use language features circa 1979 when it was written. A more recent and more powerful but slower C compiler for CPM is the High Tech C compiler, which is available free for non-commercial use and is still being maintained. Another language option is Turbo Pascal, which started on CPM and was later offered on Windows and Mac platforms. I have it installed on Drive D. It's very fast, includes an IDE for editing, and can directly compile and run in memory or generate an executable file. Here's a sample session compiling a small Hello World program. Finally, I had earlier written a port of my machine language monitor program JMON to the Z80. I adapted it to run on this board under CPM. Here's a sample session. I've also designed to build my own Z80 single board computer. 
but this system was fun because it allows exploring CPM. I previously had experience with CPM years ago when it was current, and more recently with a Brielle Altair 8800 replica, but it only emulated an 8080 processor, and some CPM applications require a Z80. So this let me play with more programs like the BDSC compiler and BBC Basic. There are CPM emulators that run on modern computers, but I highly recommend this kit if you want to run CPM on real hardware.